This is what we have to face every day in our life. Breathing pollution in and out. Are the face masks and covering our faces going to protect us from the dangers of these pollutants? If yes, think again. Of all the serious health hazards caused by environmental factors, asthma is one such respiratory disorder that affects millions of people around the world. According to WHO, between 100 and 150 million people around the globe suffer from asthma and this number is rising. Worldwide, deaths from this condition have reached over 180,000 annually. India has an estimated 15 to 20 million asthmatics and rough estimates indicate a prevalence of between 10 to 15 percent in 5 to 11 year old children. If these statistics have surprised you, then it is very important that we understand and learn more about asthma. Asthma is a chronic respiratory disease that affects your airways. These airways are the tubes that carry air in and out of your lungs. If you have asthma, the inside walls of your airways get swollen. This swelling makes the airways very sensitive and they tend to react strongly to things that you are allergic to or find irritating. When the airways react, they get narrower and less air flows through to your lungs. Muscles around the airways then tighten up, making the airways narrower so that less air flows through them. As the inflammation further increases, the airways become more swollen and even narrower. Cells in the airways may also make more mucus than usual. This extra mucus also narrows the airways. All these changes make it harder to breathe. And you get what is commonly known as an asthma attack. There are things in the environment that bring on your asthma symptoms and lead to asthma attacks. Some of the more common things include exercise and allergens, like animal dander, dust mites, pollen from trees and grass, molds, which are known to be main trigger factors. Irritants that can precipitate an asthma attack include smoking, pollution, strong odors or scents, and perfumes. Weather changes and viral infections are also causative factors. Besides these, certain medications, infections, food, beverages, and emotions at times also play a vital role in bringing up an attack. Making a correct diagnosis of asthma is very important for its treatment and prevention. A visit to the doctor will help confirm the diagnosis of asthma. Let us find out how a visit to the doctor can help us. How do we know for sure that this is an asthma attack and not other lung conditions or heart disease or gastroesophageal reflux disease? Come, let us find out. Because of the narrowing of the airways, you get a whistling sound when you breathe that is called asthma wheezing. Along with coughing <coughs> and chest tightness, this makes it more and more difficult to breathe. These attacks are more prevalent at night or early in the morning. It is important to remember that not all people have these symptoms and symptoms may vary from one asthma attack to another. Sometimes symptoms can be mildly annoying and pass away and you may not realize it. Other times they can be serious enough to make you stop what you are doing and may even prove to be life-threatening. Knowing the symptoms is not enough. In order to prevent an attack it is necessary that you know when these symptoms can occur and what causes them. 
Some people with asthma have symptoms only once every few months. Others have symptoms every week. And still other people have symptoms every day. The doctor on your visit takes a detailed history which includes when, how, where and what caused the attack, thus identifying the allergens and the severity of the attack. As we said earlier, asthma can be mild or can be life-threatening. Hence, a detailed history helps determine which level of asthma you are in. The levels are shown in this chart. Once the doctor determines which level of asthma you belong to, he will listen to your breathing and look for signs of asthma or allergies. Besides general questioning and physical examination, there are many devices which help understand the functioning of your lungs, assess the severity of the asthma, and help to monitor the course of treatment. Come, let us find out what these devices are and how do they help us detect asthma. The famous devices used in regular practice to check how your lungs are working include either a peak flow meter or an exometer or a spirometer. Testing with any one of these instruments determines how much air you can blow out of your lungs after taking a deep breath and how fast you can do it. The results will be lower than normal if your airways are inflamed and narrowed or if the muscles around your airways have tightened up. Following these clinical tests, the doctor may advise certain laboratory tests that include chest x-ray, blood and sputum tests, and allergy skin prick testing, which will identify and confirm the presence or absence of allergies. If you have asthma, it is important to learn how to take care of yourself. Work with your doctor on a daily asthma self-management plan. Most importantly, you need to know what things bring on your asthma symptoms. Then, do what you can do to avoid or limit contact with these things. For example, if animal dander is a problem for you, keep your pet out of the house, or at least out of your bedroom, or Find it a new home. Do not smoke or allow smoking in your home, especially if your child is an asthmatic. If pollen is a problem for you, stay indoors with the air conditioner on when the pollen count is high. To control dust mites, wash your sheets, blankets, pillows, and stuffed toys once a week in hot water, or get special dust-proof covers for your mattresses and pillows. If cold air bothers you, wear a scarf over your mouth and nose in the winter. If you have symptoms when you exercise or do routine physical activities like climbing stairs, work with your doctor to find ways to be active without having asthma symptoms. Physical activity is important. Once the doctor confirms that you have had an asthma attack, he will put you immediately on medications. There are two main types of medicines for asthma, quick relief medicines and long-term control medicines. Everyone with asthma needs a quick relief or so-called rescue medicine to stop asthma symptoms before they get worse. These medicines are bronchodilators such as beta agonists, theophylin, and anticholinergics. These medications come inhaled, in pill form, liquid or injectables. They act quickly to relax tightened muscles around your airways so that the airways can open up and allow more air to flow through, relieving symptoms of coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, or difficulty in breathing. The most effective long-term control medicine for asthma is an inhaled corticosteroid because this medicine reduces the airway swelling that makes asthma attacks more likely. They are the preferred medicine for controlling mild, moderate, and severe persistent asthma. 
They are generally safe when taken as directed by your doctor. Other long-term control medicines include inhaled long-acting beta agonists, like bronchodilators, or muscle relaxers, not anti-inflammatory drugs. Sometimes the doctor advises long-acting beta agonists together with inhaled corticosteroid medicines. Leukotriene modifiers, or theophylline, are also prescribed either alone to treat mild persistent asthma or together with inhaled corticosteroids to treat moderate or severe asthma. Many people get worried about the side effects these medications cause. Some of the side effects which require doctor's attention are dizziness, feeling of choking, irritation or swelling in the throat, flushing or redness of skin, hives, increased shortness of breath, skin rash, swelling of face, lips or eyelids, tightness in chest or wheezing, or troubled breathing. But remember, the effects of the medications outweigh the side effects it causes. Many times medicines do not show much effect, but this is not because of faulty medicine, but faulty techniques of using the medicines, especially the inhalers. When you use the inhaler, make sure the inhaler is aimed into your mouth so that the spray does not hit the roof of your mouth or your tongue. Or, Place the mouthpiece in your mouth between your teeth and over your tongue, with your lips closed tightly around it. Do not block the mouthpiece with your teeth or tongue. Start to breathe in slowly through your mouth, and at the same time, press the top of the canister one time to get one puff of medicine. Continue to breathe in slowly for three to five seconds. Count the seconds while inhaling. It is important to press the top of the canister and breathe in slowly at the same time so that the medicine gets into your lungs. In case you are not using the inhaler properly, you will see a fine mist coming from your mouth or nose. Also try your best to hold your breath as long as you can, up to 10 seconds. This gives the medicine time to settle in your airways and lungs. Thereafter, Take the mouthpiece away from your mouth and breathe out slowly. Mastered this art, you have conquered asthma. But your fight is not over yet. Medications are not the end of asthma, but the way you live and survive it is much more important. Let us now see how we can live with asthma and yet be asthma-free.